Scott, congratulations. Thanks. Yeah, heading home to play for a championship in front of your home crowd. How do you feel right now? Well, obviously winning is better than losing, but um, you know, um, what a what a game. I mean. <laughs> What a slugfest this back and forth. It's a remarkable game, really. Um, and we're lucky to come out on the other side of it. So um, we haven't done anything. Um, obviously, the win is, is important, but we, we haven't done anything yet. And uh, for us, it's just about um, regrouping again and just going through our daily process. And we won't talk about anything other than getting ready for Tuesday to Wednesday and get to the game on Thursday. Um, but again, our guys um, were just very gritty um, at the right times and just kept competing and found ways. and. Um, you know, it was obviously a hell of a shot that Jack made. Uh, you know, I, uh, I feel for them over there, to be quite honest with you, because I've lost games like that, just like that, when you, you think you have it and, and something like that happens. But uh, our determination and grit was uh, on display, and um, the fight was really, really good. Jack shot, he's hit big ones before, but where does that rank? I mean, in the history of the Jack Chubb, that's going to be talked about for a long time. Well, it's just another shot. Uh, if we happen to somehow another win a championship, they'll talk about it. But right now, it's just another half-court shot that went in. Um, and he's had two of them this year, and, and you know, um, he's just one of those guys that uh, loves those kind of moments. And um, uh, obviously, you're not scripting any of that, and it just happened. But um, again, we haven't done anything. We're obviously excited to win in this building, um, and we just got to now just come back down. Um, and just start uh, recuperating and getting ready. I don't know if you had a chance to talk to the guys yet. What do you say? Do you say enjoy this moment for half an hour and then put it behind you? Do you soak it up? You yeah, listen, it? I'm all about celebrating because life's very short. And so I'm about celebrating uh, whether you are the championship team in some other sport and you just beat everyone all the time and you think you're too good to celebrate. We, we'll celebrate, um, have some excitement, enjoy this evening, and then we're just back to business when we travel tomorrow morning back to Hobart um, and just start to recover again. You know, um, Obviously, just another slugfest back and forth, and um, uh, we'll just do our process and, and not think anything other than just win, win Tuesday, and then we'll get to Wednesday. What went through your head when that shot went up? It looked good. That's how I was seeing from behind the play when he released it. It looked good. Then I know it's Jack. That's what he does. So. What do you feel will change for you guys out there? It seemed like you had a, a lot more flow offensively than <clears throat> you have other games in the series. I think everyone backs themselves. Um, no matter what happened the games before, everyone plays their game. And we believe in each other. We know the work we put in and practice with our vitamins and with all the coaches. So we know we can make shots and make plays. And we believe that. Scott, what prompted the Majuk thing at the five minutes, and how do you feel that was sort of the, the spark that I feel like getting basically this win? Well, I think um, he's proven over the course of time uh, with us that he's had moments. You know, we wouldn't be sitting here without his game two uh, efforts uh, against Perth at home when we were kind of flat and he came in and I think got 17 or 18 points for us. And uh, he's, you know, fought through injuries and been patient sitting over there and um, uh, working hard every single day in practice. and. Um, it's just one of those things for me. Uh, I probably, probably should give a shout out to Don Nelson with small ball, and just thought that it was time for him to see if we could get him going. And uh, we came out of the huddle, and he drilled his first three off a, a set play that we had just diagrammed. And um, he's a scorer, and when he sees the ball go through in his length, um, uh, he was obviously um, a deciding factor here. But I think just all the things that we were doing uh, that allow us to stay in there. I, I just noticed here 21 offensive rebounds again. Um, those are all reloads and possibilities again for us to, to score when, when we weren't uh, doing as well. And uh, you know they're 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 super tough over there. They're championship level guys, um, and you know uh, m much respect to them. And um, it's a difficult one, I know, um, but I'm glad we're on the other side of it. Uh, it's a series of adjustments. Obviously, I think they went to the best ball lineup about five minutes left. It's got to be interesting seeing Will on the bench. Did you have any? either concerns or did you think about maybe going back to getting a big on the floor when, when they went small? No. I thought that uh, Jack and uh, Jook can handle uh, guarding guys for the most part and keep them in front. They obviously have some elite scores and uh, seasoned players over there. But um, you know, Jook's length is a factor at times. And, and Jack's uh, improved his defense. Um, but no, I never thought about going back to that. They were, they were playing well together, and they were moving the ball, and they were creating some space. and. Um, you know, the guys play when they play, and um, you know, like uh, I guess you know, Jordan Crawford tonight is probably the most minutes he's played in, uh, in this series, or close to it, and you know, was hugely impactful for us. Again, seeing the ball going for him is really important, and um, 
just energized us uh, throughout the game. You've been usually quite strict about when guys get two fouls in the second quarter, they're off the floor. Milton picked up two fouls. You kept him on. I think he sparked the run that kept you guys very much in the game. What led to that being less conservative for this time of year? It's now or never. We're not. I don't know <laughs> if we'll ever be back to this spot ever again. And so, um, just roll the dice and go. And you know, you you you. You think basically that if he plays 30 minutes, he's probably going to have four or five fouls close to that anyways if he gets his normal 30 minutes. So um, in your mind, you're just thinking, can he get 30 minutes and play with four fouls, which he's done multiple times during the course of the year. And, and then the other thing is you know, to start him in the fourth with his fourth foul. Again, uh, I don't know when we'll sit here together like this uh, with a chance um, to be in this position in the grand finals. And let's, let's let it rip. Yeah. Do you have an idea on Marcus? I, I haven't really seen him uh, other than back there with the group and everything, um, but I have really no idea. And um, yeah, I don't have any idea. We'll obviously get him back to Hobart and see where we stand with him. Bill, can you just take us through that last play when the ball comes in the Dali? I've never watched it live and can't get up and look back at it. What's going through your head? Did it come off the deck of his play and you kind of save it back in? Or what? Can you talk to us about that? Yeah, I didn't know. I saw Shiny jump, and I couldn't tell if he touched it or not, but I wasn't going to leave it up to the refs to make a decision. So save it in. I looked and saw Jack and just got him the ball. I knew whoever got it could make a play with six seconds on the clock. Um, what, did that, what did that small ball lineup do for you out there in all that space? It just made it easier for guys to – to get off me and have to make some decisions with Juk. Juk's an amazing scorer, score from anywhere on the court, and we see him do it every day in practice. So having him pop and shoot some threes, and then they have to close out to him, and he could put on the floor, and his length getting at the rim is it's hard to guard. So it made it easier for me and for everyone else on the court. Scott, when Milton got Billy Powers in that third quarter and Marcus Lee went down with injury, how much did that impact your rotation for the rest of the game? Well, I, I mean, it impacts a little bit, but again, you know, I've said this all along. We, I, I play whoever, <laughs> uh, whoever's sitting there ready to go. I, I believe in all of our guys, and they all do the work during the week and for the entire year. And I have faith in all of them that I'll put them out there at any point. I mean, you know, Shawnee Max is a developmental player. I think people forget that he is actually on our roster as a developmental player. So um, I'll play whoever. Fab got his minutes in there, which were fantastic and very helpful. Um, and everyone's just chipping in where they need to be, and 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 we function fairly well. Uh, Irregardless of the groups that are on the floor, they understand our concepts for the most part, and um, uh, they figure things out. The, the group intelligence of, of this group is is high, and um, you know I'm not afraid to use anybody. No one might need to be done to make sure you hold up that trophy in game four home. Keep defending, keep standing together, keep rebounding, and do what we do. Jack jump for basketball. We push it over the line and get this trophy. How much do you Number, I guess. Yeah. Loud. Always loud. Uh, that's what I love about them. You can hear them whatever stadium we're in, uh, going through the airport, just the support from them. Wherever we go, we always know we got someone in the crowd with a Jack Jumper jersey on, and we appreciate it. Scott, you talked about Sean Mack, and there was some talk around him winning the most improved and saying other guys were more deserving. He's sort of proving that he was the one that always should have won it, right? Well, I mean, I mentioned before, like, if you, if you want to just go by statistics and those kind of things, then you, you don't need coaches or people to vote on them. You just tick the best five scores, and they're the first team, and the second five scores, and the top rebounder is the top rebounder. And if you're just going to go by points differential of how they're improved, um, but the coaches vote on this, and they understand the impact of a player on the floor for you. And you know his his numbers were slightly better than they were last year, and compared to the other guys, maybe not quite as much. But the impact that he has for a team, the impact he has for winning, um, and in our group and a developmental player. Um, yeah, he's the guy. He's the, he's the next star. What are you expecting out of um, Melbourne United coming back down there on Thursday? <laughs> I expect a, a war. Uh, again, they they have world championship guys over there. Uh, they have, uh, in my opinion, the best coach in Australia over there. So they're they're coming to swing, um, and it, it, it's nothing that we're not expecting uh, when we always play them, whether it was the first year or the now. Um, we're all going to have to be on our toes and, and, and ready to go. And um, they're a championship caliber team with great grit and determination. And um, they're going to give us everything. Scott, 33 three-point attempts in this one. 
I think the most in games one and two was 20. Mm -hmm. Was that a focus for you guys going in making sure that you got those shots up? Well, we never talk about things uh, uh, on the three-point line. We're not analytically driven. We just shoot a lot of them just in general because of how our set and our system works. And when you get 21 rebounds, you get a lot of reloads. And those, uh, what we call daggers for us, those daggers start to present themselves. Um, those are actually the easiest threes you can take during the course of a game. And um, to get on the glass as much as we were and have those reloads were just uh, hugely important for us um, to continue having the uh, scoreboard tick over. Good. Thanks, guys. Thank right, you. Guys. See you all in Hobart.